Can I now turn to you, um, Ide, uh, with a view from China and on China? Thank you, Chairman. Um, first of all, I have to say uh, I'm not an uh, expert on public health like uh, uh, other member of uh, this panel. Uh, I guess because I'm the only Chinese in person at the WPC, <laughs> so organizer <laughs> want to double my <laughs> assignment. That's a lot of responsibility <laughs> yeah. on your shoulders. Uh, but, yeah, but anyway, uh, as an observer, as someone gone through uh, lockdown in China in past three years, uh, I would like to share my view on what's going on in China, uh, what uh, experience and the lesson uh, can learn from China uh, to deal with the uh, future X disease or unknown uh, violence. Uh, first of all, I guess um, being trans, uh, transparency uh, should be the first uh, principle of the unknown virus or X disease in the future. Here I mean uh, the virus origin gene composition, uh, evolution of, of a virus, uh, and its possible harm on the human being, uh, etc., uh, should be released. All this information should be released to the public, uh, government department, and the CDC on time. I understand there is a controversial on whether Chinese government do enough on this area. Uh, honestly, I'm not positioned to make a judgment on the issue. But the one factor I wanted to, to raise here, uh, actually the one professor at the uh, Fudan University in Shanghai uh, published the gene composition uh, on the internet. That enables to other company uh, in Western to produce PCR testing material to produce a vaccine very soon. Without his uh, uh, release, it's hard to imagine. Uh, in short period of time, a uh, vaccine can be uh, produced. Secondly, uh, the action should be taken quickly. I want to use the term yesterday, uh, rapidity of action. That's also very important. When local authority find an unknown virus, they should immediately uh, report to national CDC, uh, while national CDC should immediately report to uh, WHO according to the retired procedure. In case of China, I have to say, the local government had been a little bit slow to quickly re report case to uh, national CDC. That's the lesson, I guess, uh, we should uh, take it. Uh, third point is physical separation and its uh, extreme form, uh, lockdown, is effective at the beginning uh, to prevent expansion of virus. At the beginning, it's effective. Uh, the earlier it takes, the more effective would be, and the smaller its scope could be. The, you know, in the beginning of 2020, Chinese government shut down the Wuhan uh, city. Wuhan is the capital of Hubei uh, province. That lockdown uh, in early 2020 is, uh, was a successful example. It helped uh, much less case occurred in China in that year uh, relative to other countries. It also helped China become only one of the large economy uh, which get a positive GDP growth in 2020. Uh, the fourth point, first lesson, I guess, the flexibility and, se and the sensibility are necessary to deal variation of virus. Different measures should be taken to different variation. A past success, successful measure doesn't mean 
a future uh, success. Uh, in China, I guess uh, at the beginning, they did a good job. But starting from this year, I guess Chinese government has been slow to reaction of Omicron. The Omicron occurred in China December of last year. Uh, it takes several months at least. Chinese government should understand the nature of Omicron. They should not continue to take uh, uh, zero COVID policy until recently. I guess they lift the restriction uh, immediately in, I guess, in past one or two weeks. Uh, that's uh, fortunately uh, for uh, Chinese, also fortunately uh, for Chinese people, because in past several months, uh, China went through a uh, very tough uh, time. The, the cost is very high. The economy slowed down. Uh, but now I change, the, the policy has been changed. We will see uh, what happens in the uh, near future. The last point is the awareness public on the virus or an X disease uh, are also very important. Um, I came here a little bit earlier due to the availability of a flight. I met some staff uh, at a Bank of China here in uh, uh, UAE. They told me very interesting case. Uh, one staff originally uh, came from Wuhan. In January 16, uh, 2020, his family, uh, including his parents, wife, two kids uh, from Wuhan fly to Dubai. He read some article in newspaper. So he, he knows something happened, but he doesn't know the detail. But he's very smart. He keep all of family members stay at home. Don't go outside. But later on, one by one, some symptoms appear. He, first of all, he sent his mom to the hospital here. The doctor checked, no answer. They don't know what's going on here. They came back all midnight. The doctor and the nurse came to their home because they find, uh, do some PCR test. They found some virus. Their whole family be moved to the hospital to quarantine. So he brought it to me. He said, yes, we brought the virus to UAE, but we never infect anyone here in UAE. That's a very good example. Now, what happened in China? I guess Chinese government should do more on public understand what's going on. Otherwise, it will create a serious consequence. Might be the wave uh, will occur in China. I guess uh, Chinese governments will start to do that. I just stop here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, thank you for uh, emphasizing from the start how uh, China very, very early on made the sequence of the virus available. That, if, if I remember well, was on January 2nd, 2020. I mean, within days after the first cases were reported to WHO. That had not been the case with some other viruses in the history. But uh, this issue of sharing sequences is clearly one of the key issues of the ongoing negotiations of a new pandemic treaty at international level. So, you know, within the new field of health diplomacy, there is a subfield of, of uh, <coughs> genomic sequence sharing uh, di diplomacy um, uh, now nowadays. Maybe before. Yeah, I guess uh, the, you are right. And, and sorry, may, maybe could you also say a few words about the current acceptance 
of the virus by people over the age, let's say, of 65 or 70 of the vaccine, in China. You mean? Yeah, I, I guess uh, you are right. Uh, several um, Eastern, uh, um, Eastern Asia countries did uh, this similar things, lockdown at the beginning of 2020. Uh, but now you are right, they transfer uh, <coughs> to another model, another panel. Uh, interestingly, uh, what happened in Hong Kong, because uh, Hong Kong have a close relation with the, well, with the mainland China, but finally they, they changing the model. Uh, actually, we as an organization, I have a good uh, contact with the professor of a medical school of uh, Hong Kong University. He showed his view uh, to experience uh, what, have, what happened in Hong Kong. He, report, he said to me, actually, Xinhua News Agency asked him to write a report which sent to central government of China. Uh, what I try to say, what happened in uh, other countries uh, have some impact on the changing of Chinese uh, government policy on zero uh, uh, COVID uh, policy. That's my uh, feeling. Yeah. Thank you very much.